Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. I know Kyle's missing, but I wanted to get this video up and I just needed to film a quick little intro because we actually recorded this video a while ago. I had Kyle answer some questions in my like wife chat Q&A and they were really good, but that video ended up being I think like 45 minutes. So we decided to take a couple of the questions from that video and turn it into its own video on our couples channel so we hope you guys enjoy in this video we just answer two questions but we have like a pretty long in-depth conversation about both so if you guys want to see more videos like this let us know give this video a thumbs up and i hope you enjoy the rest of the video <laughs> okay somebody asked this is kind of like a long question so we'll see what part of it we can really answer oh oh sorry Okay, um, go ahead. How do you match expectations when two people's sex drives are vastly different? Oh. How do you avoid making sex a task slash obligation for one party or like physical intimacy is being withheld for the other? As Christians, I feel like this is something that's never talked about or considered before marriage. Um, seems... Okay, let's see. Should, shouldn't sex drive compatible compatibility be a thing if it's even possible can we start at the top yeah so how do you avoid making s oh wait how much <laughs> how do you match expectations when two people's sex drives are vastly different okay well i are we okay to talk about sex drives yeah okay like i feel like our I sex drives be. are not vastly different yeah so like you have a higher sex drive than mm -hmm. me but i've also gone through sexual trauma um, which I feel like really changed my sex drive. Yeah. Um, and just like my relationship with sex, which is something I need to always work on. Mm -hmm. But for you, what would, I mean, I feel like it's not like. My sex drive is essentially tamed. <laughs> <laughs> No, like, I mean, yeah. honestly, though, because... Compared to, like, your younger self. Exactly, yeah. Like, it used to be, like, through the of... roof and all of that, and honestly, like, at a very unhealthy level, to the point where I was, you know, addicted to pornography for, like, 10 years, and, um, you know, it was, like, the only thing that was on my mind, and it yeah. kind of, like, motivated, it was my, you know, motivation and all this stuff. It was so crazy when you think about it, and, I mean, I know there's people that are going to say, oh, like... You know, that's not a good thing, or you should have a higher sex drive, or you should want it, or whatever. And it's like, I hear what you're saying, but it's not a bad thing either. You know, so like for me, my sex drive, that it was very, very high. And then I came to the Lord, and He set me free from that fully, and basically put me on this two-year journey, which I thought was going to be a forever journey of never having sex again. But basically a two-year journey of being single, and just seeking the Lord, and being in relationship with Him. And it was amazing, so fruitful in it kind of just showed me like what true life is and like what's really important and all of that you know obviously our walk through Jesus is just a whole nother story um kind of the same story but a very long story so I'll save you guys some of the details of that for now but really when we got together and we got married I think or before we got married even I think our sex drive was even a little higher because it was yeah. like the excitement of like, a new relationship and yeah and like I, I was talking to them earlier about how you would we would just make out all the time yeah and but like we couldn't go any further right. so it's like that it's almost like the fact that you can't have sex makes you want it have builds sex the anticipation <laughs> and it causes you know temptation you yeah. know when in marriage it's good temptation and you know outside of it it's not good but 100 percent. and then we got married and then we could have sex and I think in the beginning it was higher, but then it started slowing down. Yeah. You know? And oh my goodness. Well we actually had like a cookie <laughs> kid and like handsome handsome has enough sex drive for everybody, for everybody. in the world. <laughs> come here. Hey, come. Come. Um, I feel like we also had some miscommunication Stay. or some like hurt when it came to our sex life. Yeah. Like, I don't know like a year into marriage or yeah. maybe a little bit before that and so we ended up having like it i think it was a really a holy spirit led conversation because we ended up meeting up with um some of his friends who became my friends and they asked about our sex life and we just like sat there for a couple hours and we were all talking about 
just sex and marriage and things like that and it actually led to really good conversations because what was it did you feel like rejected or like yeah basically was that like the root of it yeah or like not wanted or desired oh yeah because i was not pursuing sex initiating sex right um which is hard for me with my past i think right. it's like not doesn't come as naturally to me anymore and so then you wouldn't initiate right because it felt like you shouldn't have to yeah well it was just at a point of like It's not that I felt like I shouldn't have to. I think I just really wanted her to initiate, yeah. to show me that she was interested or wanted to have sex with me. So it's not that I, I thought only she should initiate and it's just that, but it basically became a thing and a, honestly a fear and a doubt and a lie in my own head of she doesn't want me, she's not interested in me, and it caused me to just close off. And I think that actually was the pivotal moment that shifted our momentum yeah. <laughs> and caused us to be more docile or just, I'm not even docile at that point. At that point, it was just like distant, Wait, you know? So you're saying that conversation led us to be more distant? No, 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 no. That, the lies and the oh, feelings yeah. and all that before the conversation, okay. <laughs> but it caused us to be more distant. But yes, yeah. we had that conversation and we were, we revealed the truth and we came to the understanding of what was really going on. And then that shifted a lot, um, for us moving forward. Yeah. Um, with all that being said, I feel like talking about sex in marriage is super important because sometimes we go like even acknowledging like, Oh, we haven't had sex in a while. And just like, putting it out there because we both think about that right we're both thinking that in the back of our head and yeah. it just I think that's how it becomes a task or an obligation is because you're it's not in the open you're like thinking about it um you both are thinking about sex but you're not communicating about sex mm. I think it's totally okay to be like we haven't had sex in a while let's have sex tonight mm -hmm. you know or like let's um, try to have sex every Tuesday. What if you need to schedule it? We're trying to schedule it right now, yeah. honestly, because we have date nights on Tuesdays. Yep. So we're trying to like schedule it with like those kinds of activities. Yeah. Um, the intimate moments, the special moments, date night or yeah. even Sabbath or whatever it may be. Yes. So, um, because you know, I feel like it's always in the back of your mind of like, when did we have sex last? Like, and Things are just so much better when we have sex. Yeah. Like our marriage is so much better. 100%. We feel closer. So just talk about it. Yeah. Like literally. I think that's the best way to answer it. Just talk about it. Seriously. Yeah. We kind of yeah. shared with you how we've gone through this and we, yeah. we were very different and all that. So we get it. We understand. Um, but conversation is so key. And in that you can come to... Uh, um, a mutual understanding and a plan on how to increase your sex or sexual intimacy, right? Yeah. Because the next question is how do you avoid making sex a task, obligation for one party and like a physical intimacy is being withheld for the other? I think in it, it's always, there's always physical intimacy, right? And it's not necessarily a task. I, I think that's coming from a negative place, but it's okay to plan it out and you know get excited about it and talk about it and it's not a task at that point like okay i have to do this it's like we look forward to doing it like this is the this is when we're going to do it we both want to we both talk about it, we both think about it but now that we're communicating we can actually plan put a plan in place to help us stay connected in and intimate physically through scheduling it out or whatever you need to do to make it more of a priority in your marriage because yeah. it is so important and it, it it's needed honestly in marriage yeah. and the lord uses it and it's beautiful and it's a gift from the lord so don't allow it to pass you by and even though sometimes time does get away and it's like wow we haven't had you know sex in x amount of time that's okay it's like okay cool let's make sure we get you know yeah we do it this week, week or whatever it may be. At least talk about it so it's not like weighing heavy yeah. on you like, oh, it's been so long, like things like that. Um, right. I would also say that with the sex drive thing, I know it can be due to hormones and like your physical, like if you're not taking care of your body 
if you're not exercising sometimes like or if your hormones are out of balance or you're on birth control or you just got off birth control if you're pregnant things like that will definitely affect your sex drive trauma sexual trauma will affect your sex drive so i encourage you to talk to maybe a doctor about that talk to a therapist about that mm -hmm. um because yeah those will all affect it as well and then last thing i'll say on this too is kind of going back to what we initially brought up with the initiating initial initiating <laughs> funny not intended um <laughs> However, if you have a higher sex drive than your partner, if you initiate, more often than not, your partner is going to want to be about it. Yeah. And for guys and girls, it's different. Okay, for me, it's very easy for Kyan to initiate if like her sex drive is higher than mine and I'm not initiating or whatever at the time or moment or whatever. It's very easy for her to get me going, right? Uh, for her, you know, there's more planning and, you know, you gotta, you gotta prepare and, you know, it's like a lot of, you know, it's like emotional connection, yeah, connection needed and, you know, Probably, a date night or, yeah. you know, whatever it may be coming home with flowers and, uh, whatever it is, figure out what works for your partner, but it does take a little more. So for guys, if you're watching this, it's like put in the work. Yeah. Okay. For girls, and I'm assuming this question is coming from a girl, just try initiating. Like, if you're the one who's like, uh, you know, like, I feel like they're not into it or whatever, they're into it. Yeah. So, or if you have the lower sex drive and your husband has the higher sex drive, um, definitely still try to initiate it. 100%. Because if he's the one only initiating it, I feel like that is what makes it even more of a task for you. Because you never feel mm. like you're in control and you always feel like sometimes you have to sh shoot him down. Mm. So, if you can go buy yourself some, like cute pajamas, lingerie, something that makes you feel good. Like, I always tell Kyle, we're not going to have sex after we eat dinner. So <laughs> right. we got to do it before then because right. I'm not going to feel good right. after dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just thinking about what will set us up for success. Absolutely. And I think that'll take the pressure off yeah. a little bit as well. And, and then, it is. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, also read this book, A Celebration mm. of Sex for Newlyweds. It mm. talks all about a lot of the things that we have discussed. And this was in your nightstand, so I'm assuming you want to read this again. <laughs> <laughs> we should go through it again. But, yeah, this was really fun to read on our honeymoon. That's funny. Yeah, I forgot I put it in there. <laughs> but, yeah, I found, like, three books when I was organizing. When we first moved here, I was like, we should read these. Yeah. yeah, and that was one of them. And that was one of them, See? yep. Yeah, because you need to talk about sex. That's it, And that was really about. helpful to talk about it sex. It was, yeah. we read it together on our honeymoon, and that would really ignite conversations about yeah. sex. And on, that's when we were having the most sex. Right, because <laughs> so. conversations about it lead to action. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, last question is, what do you do if you feel your boyfriend was brought to you by the Lord and is the one... And he says he's a Christian, but he doesn't read his Bible because he doesn't like to read or doesn't have time and stuff like that. Um, I, that. I know. I was actually, this was another one I wanted Kyle to come in. Do you want to come back? On my way. <laughs> okay, so Kyle also says he doesn't like to read, but I feel like... I think I sent that question in, actually. <laughs> what do I do with this man who doesn't like to read? Uh, but you still read your Bible. 100%. So like, what would you? So she thinks that her boyfriend is from the Lord and is the one, mm. but he says he's a Christian, but he doesn't read his Bible. Mm. But I feel like the fact that she's even saying he says he's a Christian, mm -hmm. like, is throwing me off. Because right? I feel does like, she not believe he's a Christian? Yeah. Or like, why does he have to say he's a Christian? Like, you really should know he's a Christian through by, the way he lives his life. Yeah. Like not the way by he, what he says loves you or treats you or treats other people the way he talks the way he acts responds his serves morals following right you know, god's commandments yeah like, his actions words and deeds like are do they align with god's word you know like are you reading his word um but he says he doesn't like to read or doesn't have time well i feel like we all go through phases 100 percent. like kyle does not like to read no he still went through phases of reading I his still Bible do. every day. Oh, but like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But then also we've been married, and there's times we both go without reading our Bible for long periods of time. 100%. But we still live out our faith Correct. through other ways. There's no doubt 
that we love the Lord and we follow yeah. Him. Yeah. Um, Sorry, guys. <laughs> like my rib cages are catching up to me. <sighs> I would agree, though. I think that that's the flag. All I heard was he doesn't like to read, and he's not reading his Bible or something. Yeah. And I've been there, and honestly, I'm there right now. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I could definitely talk on that because I can confidently tell you I'm a Christian. I love the Lord and I live for the Lord. Am I in his word every day right now? No. Am I in his word every week? Once a week right now? Maybe. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. does automated text messages with scripture count? <laughs> I don't know. But my point is, is it doesn't take away from my identity in Christ and how I live for the Lord, and I allow Him to convict me and renew me, guide me, speak through me. Um, it doesn't hold me back from praying for people and speaking life into people. Um, we're going to church. We're going we're to like church and other yeah, and, and doing all those things, going to small groups. So I might not be in the Word right now, personally in my own time, like in my secret place or whatever, but I'm still living for the Lord. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing because the Lord will convict us and he will instill the desire and the motivation even to actually get back into his word. As long as we're in the Lord, his word is in us, right? Um, it's relationship at the end of the day. And Jesus is human, right? He's in, you know God in flesh. However, it, the word says that um, that he is the word, you know, so it's like when we're in him, we're also in the word. There's been so many times where I feel like I've been reading the word every day because of my intimacy with the Lord, even if I haven't read it for like weeks. So I just share that to kind of paint the picture of him being in the word in the sense of like actually reading it every day or even once a week or whatever it may be it is important but it's not it's not like your mark as a your identity a, yeah or right. your identity but i feel 100%. like the key thing to look for is what you're saying earlier the conviction correct and the correction and the desire like 100%, even though like, kyle isn't reading his bible right. or i'm not even it's right. like we both talk about all the time oh, we should we be should reading read it i want to read it <laughs> i just can't get into it right now i'm yeah. so tired and we make excuses and the lord convicts us on all this so you guys don't have to okay yeah. but yeah but there's always that holy spirit in us saying right like, read the word. yeah 100 like, percent and then we do, and we get ourselves to that point, and it was just like the other day, we were like, all right, what if we just read like one verse a day, you know, just one verse. And we still haven't done that. And we that, still but... haven't done it, but, <laughs> but the conviction like... and the desire is there so because I we're would, in the Lord. Yeah, so I would say if he's just making excuses, like, oh, I don't like to read, oh, I don't right. have time for that, but he's never coming back around like, oh, I really should do that, or, or like, I, I really want to... want to do that, but... Like, I hate reading, like, I say this all the time, I hate reading, but I really want to get into the Word again, yeah. and and I did have a season when I first came to the Lord that I was in His Word every day, hours every day, like, it was insane when I, I first came to Him, excuse me. Yeah. Um, and he could also listen to sermons, he could be 100%. listening to the audio Bible, so, you know, I feel like you have to see, is this just, is he just making excuses and there's actually no conviction and desire because he's still living in the world as he's making those excuses yeah or is he actually living out his faith even if he's not in the word right in this season 100 yeah. percent. and there are seasons and we have to have grace for that and the lord is in control so we trust in him through what he's doing in our lives in each season but yeah it comes down to what we were just saying about that like are you actually living for the Lord, even if you're not reading his word right now, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's obvious. And if you're questioning it, then it's... Just pray on it. <laughs> yeah, something to pray <laughs> it's on. It's hard to say. It's, it's something to... to pray on. We can't make that judgment call. Yeah. Honestly, it's hard for you to even make that judgment call. It's going to take a lot of prayer and, and discernment. discernment and wisdom, which all comes from the Lord. So you being immersed in the Lord will reveal that to you through him revealing it to you <laughs> and giving you his eyes to see what is actually going on. So my recommendation and my advice would be like, don't rush into anything. Mm -hmm. And if you're having that doubt or that concern, pay attention to pay it. Attention to it. 
and really ask yourself, is he living out, like, his faith? Yeah, 100%. And are the convictions there? Because any person who is not, let me rephrase that, any person who is living for the Lord and with the Lord and in the Lord and has the Lord in them, they are 100% receiving conviction on the things that they know they should be doing but are not doing or on the things that the Lord is calling them to do that maybe they're not doing or whatever it may be, we, we all receive conviction. And we all sin and we all make mistakes, so we receive conviction on that as well. Is he receiving conviction on it? Yeah. That would be my question. And it's like, if he's like, no, I'm chilling, I'm good, no conviction. It's like, eh, okay. Yeah. You know, maybe you need to seek the Lord on that, you know, <laughs> but that's just what I would say. But I kind of wanted to come in because when I heard that, I was like, I do want to defend to an extent the side of even if he's not, it doesn't mean he's not walking with the Lord. Yeah. But I also do want to share that side of it too. Where Yeah, I feel like we did a good job of like showing both sides. Cool. Awesome. Peace Thanks, out. babe. <laughs> All right, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Let us know if you have any other topics you want us to discuss, your thoughts in the comments. We love you guys, and remember, Jesus loves you more.